Welcome to the Happy Progress Podcast. I'm Alex Harris, and today we're here with Angela Choi. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. Yeah, thanks for being here. Angela is an international life purpose and career coach, and he she helps you discover your life purpose and create a life you love. To get started, does progress equal happiness to you? For me, personally, it does. Um, it's also something that I need to remind myself of because I think that we live in a very achievement and result oriented society. And sometimes you think, oh, if I reach that point, then I'm going to be happy. And it's reminding myself that it's important to be happy throughout the journey and to understand that the little things that I'm doing will get to where I want to go. So yes, progress does equal happiness. But I do think that because we're so results driven, I need to remind myself of that. I feel like a lot of people also um, go through similar challenges. Yeah, that, absolutely. We, we all struggle with understanding what makes us happy or not. We, we all, all want to um, obviously uh, make more money, uh, do more stuff. Us as humans, we want more things. Uh, but that necessarily may not necessarily bring you happiness. But uh, I think it's achievement that really is uh, more focused than actually, you know, overall results or, uh, you know, success. Yeah. So you're an international life purpose and career coach. Give us a little bit of background of the type of work you do and who you work with. Yeah. So I work with people, um, all across, uh, the board, um, people who are going through transitions, people who are trying to figure out what it is that they want to do next. And especially in this day and age with COVID, people who are thinking about how to take what they're doing or what they enjoy and how to make it work in times like this when um, everything's online. So there, it really runs the gamut. But really, at the end of the day, it's people who are looking to dig deeper to realize um, and discover how it is that they want to serve um, the world and serve people and help people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, what advice do you give to uh, your, uh, your your students? Uh, how does one discover their life's purpose? Yeah, you know, I mean, <laughs> that's a, such a, a deep question. I think that so there are a couple steps to take and. Um, on my website, I do have a, a six step guide, but I'll try to go over that very quickly. Um, so I think that it's very important to turn inward. That's the first step that I would recommend. I think that a lot of us are impacted by external forces and voices um, of like people telling us what they think we should be doing. And as a result, us feeling a lot of um, pressure and expectations from other people. So the first thing that I said, suggest people to do is to turn inward and to really um, listen to their inner voice of wisdom them that really knows what it is that they want. It's just that we think we don't know because we're so clouded by all of these external voices. Do you think it's a especially unique trait for someone to have to actually want to focus on personal development or self-awareness? Uh, because this is becomes, becomes your identity, right? Uh, what you are going to be, your, your life's goal and your purpose is, is going to become. So where do they actually even begin to kind of make that into like a reality? So yes, I, I understand focusing on your, your self-awareness and insight, but once you want to get that, you know, external um, results and achievement, like we talked about that purpose, where, where does that kind of begin? Like how, how do people actually go about like figuring out what to do next? Is that what yeah, you mean? Yeah, once you, yeah. Once you start to, to focus on your, your, your internal aspects mm -hmm. of, of your ultimate purpose and you know that it's worth doing because everything mm -hmm. that we do in life, if it's important enough, we'll do it. What yes. makes, where do people begin to figure out, you know, the next step? How do I take it and actually make it part of my life? Yeah, so, I mean, I think you pointed to the keyword there so for me it's next steps right so the thing is like 
I think so it's very common for people to have these big lofty goals and then feel like it's unattainable because it seems so far off and it's like how do I actually get there and for me it's what you just mentioned the next step right so what I tell people is to focus on the next step what is the thing that you feel like you could be doing right now that will lead you to where you want to be and it's about taking these incremental baby steps and being consistent in what you do versus thinking that things happen overnight for people because I think it's so easy to look at someone who's quote-unquote successful or has it all and think like oh how do they do it how like how do I get there and the key is to take consistent action step by step. That's that's how I see it and that's how what I share with people. Excellent. Well that's what happy progress is all about. Yes. Consistent in consistent it doesn't even need to be improved. It's just consistent progress. You know, focusing on intentionally doing things every day that are gonna ultimately bring you fulfillment or, or achievement. And it doesn't necessarily always need to produce results, income, or, or overall success, but really it's about, about your purpose and bringing that into the world and sharing it. Yes, because um, something that I want to point out is if, you know, if you look back to what you did yesterday or the day before, it might not be so different from what you're doing today, right? But if you look back to where you were a month ago, then you're going to see the changes because those incremental steps that you're taking on a daily basis, they add up to something. So it doesn't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it a month out, two months out, you'll see that you're a different person or that you're doing things that maybe you didn't even think of that you think you could do two months ago. Yeah, the, the, those things uh, will compound and stack on top of each other. And uh, whether it, it does ultimately reach your goal or not, you are learning more about yourself to be able to continue to, to strive to be a, to better per, be a better person. So, so do you strive to be a better person today than you were, than you were yesterday? Yes, 100%. It's actually a quote that I go by. So the quote is, the only person you should try to be better than is the person you were yesterday, right? And the reason why I live by this quote is because um, it's very, there's no point in comparing ourselves to other people. I know that, you know, it comes very naturally. Um, but the thing is, like, we don't know people's backstories. We don't know where they started. We don't know. It's just not a fair comparison and it's never helpful, right? So if I want to be a better person, person, the only baseline that it's fair for me to compare myself against is the person that I was. Mm -hmm. Then I can see like, oh, these are the changes that I've made. This is where I started and this is where I am now. And I feel like that's the only fair way of doing it. And it's also the way to do it in a way that is self-compassionate, right? Mm -hmm. So it's definitely something that I, I live by. And have you ever dealt with like imposter syndrome or, or self-doubt kind of getting through this? Because being able to share with other people and coach people in the right way, you kind of have to somewhat have your own stuff kind of figured out first, right? Yeah, I uh, dealt with a very heavy case of imposter syndrome. So I, I went to Yale and I just never felt like I was enough there. Oh, wow. I constantly felt like I was surrounded by people who were smarter than me and that it didn't take people effort to do things. So I dealt with imposter syndrome my entire time there and even after Yale. And so I have worked through a lot of that. And because I know what it feels like to actually live through that, I think that's why I'm able to coach people because I understand how people feel because I've had that lived experience for mm -hmm. sure. Absolutely. And are you incorporating any uh, mindfulness or, or, or uh, spirituality into your practice to you know, make yourself whole? Every single day. I have a very extensive daily practice, which includes meditation, yoga, a walk, um, exercising, journaling, and gratitude journaling. So for me, 
to feel whole, um, it's important for me to nurture my mind, body, and spirit. And the things that I listed are the things that allow me to take care of myself in those three aspects. So it's really important for me to have that daily practice. Otherwise, it's so easy to get swept up in the day-to-day -day of my life. Like, I got to do this. I got to do that. Um, so it keeps me very grounded. Absolutely. I can certainly relate. I definitely picked up my meditation uh, a number of years ago. And just to be in the routine uh, of, you know, either I do it first thing in the morning when I'm uh, a little bit unconscious or uh, before I go to, to sleep or maybe throughout the, the middle of the day. But I, I, I do incorporate that with, with walking. Uh, and usually when I'm walking, I'm, I'm listening to something. So I'm always having like all of these, these positive things being put into, I call them inputs, where we're yeah. constantly intentionally putting these inputs into our into our into our mind and essentially reframing our entire day and I think uh, when I do that first thing in the morning and I'm able to then you know take on the day I've already felt like I've already uh, invested it in myself and I've, I've I'm already successful for that day I've won today and now everything else is just going to be extra because those external factors you know work job rushing from one thing to the next you know they're all going to eventually get done but you really yeah. need to take care of yourself first Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so what guidance do you give to people who are looking to enjoy life in and out of work? Yeah. So I think the number one thing for me is that living our purpose means living intentionally, right? Um, engaging in worthwhile pursuits, both in and outside of work. And I think that based on my experiences and experiences of my clients, things are worthwhile and meaningful when people feel like they're able to tap into their unique gifts and talents to contribute to the people around them. So I would recommend people to get clear on what it is that they enjoy doing and they feel like they're good at and using that and contributing to people around them because they think that when you feel like you're in contribution and when you feel like you're able to leverage your gifts like you are able to achieve this sense of contentment and fulfillment that's hard to find elsewhere, right? Like when you feel that, you don't feel like you need to turn to external things like entertainment or food or whatever it may be to fill you up because you feel full from the inside out. Absolutely. Totally makes sense. Do you have any uh, additional suggestions or uh, perspective that you'd like to share before we begin to close out? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I think that there's so much um, in terms of like what we can do to find our purpose first beginning with turning inward, right? And it's also being aware of the internal thoughts that we have that are driving our actions and the way that we show up in the world. So like just being mindful of the dialogue that's happening inside of our heads so that we don't let that stop us from pursuing what it is that we want. And again, I mentioned more of this on my website. So if people are interested, I do encourage people to visit um, and they can see the six steps that I take people through to discover their purpose. Yeah, let's tell people about a little bit more about you, how they can find out more and go from there. Yeah, so if anyone's interested, my website is www.angelachoi.co, that's C-H-O-I, and I have a free guide called Six Steps to Living Your Purpose, and there I delve further into what I've been talking about here, the six steps that you can take to delve into what it means to live your purpose. So I really encourage people to take a look at that if you feel a little stuck or if you feel a little lost and you're wondering what to do next. Um, and feel free to reach out to me. I love talking about purpose. I spent 10 years trying to find mine in the corporate startup nonprofit world in the US and Asia, Africa, Europe, everywhere, just trying to find it. So I'm so happy and excited to talk about this with anyone who's interested. Excellent. Well, I, I definitely uh, love your message and, and what you're doing. Um, uh, what would one final piece of advice that you would provide specifically for entrepreneurs, you know, people who are already essentially, they have 
what they think is a path to their purpose. What would, advice would you give them to really make an impact and an income in the world? Yeah, I think, you know, I think people have probably heard this already, but I think it's very true. It's like, if you do what it is that you love and you put the people first, the people you're serving, the money will come um, versus the other way around. I know sometimes it's hard to balance that because as entrepreneurs, we do have to like provide for ourselves and the people around us. So like money is a thing we want to make profit and we want to bring in revenue. But I also, this is where like my spiritual side comes in. It's like when you do the work that you feel like you're meant to do and you help the people that you feel like you're meant to help, the money will come. Thanks a lot for your time, Angela. Yeah, thank you, Alex. Thanks for having me. Thank you for making happy progress part of your day. How are you going to take advantage every day? Please let Alex know by visiting the website happyprogress.com. Together we will prove that progress equals happiness.